perfect. All right, we're going live in three, two, one. Begin. Welcome, everybody. It is episode five, I believe, of 32 and Goal. I'm your host, Corey. Today, we got Rob, and we are going to talk about week nine predictions. Uh, we can start off with yesterday's game. I didn't really watch it, to be honest. Did you? Been watching a single second. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't really interested in it. Uh, you know, I watched a little bit of the highlights, and I was at the bar um, with a couple of my friends, and it was on in the background, and I wasn't really paying attention to it. Um, so I don't really have too much to say about it, if you don't. It was Raiders versus 49ers. Raiders looked like a complete shit show, and 49ers pretty much destroyed them with Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins, I don't think is the name anyone thought was going to win a game this year, but there he is. So, if we if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. If not, we can just move on to other games. Uh, don't have much to say, mainly that the Raiders are in full tank mode right now, looking for that number one draft pick. Oh, they have to be. Them, like... You know, the Bills are probably the worst team in the league. I mean, you can make an exception for the Raiders right now. I would I would listen to a debate about it. But at least the Bills are trying every week. And it's like... Yeah, I, I think the Raiders are the worst team. Yeah. So, Falcons-Redskins. I think this is going to be a pretty good game. Um, Matt Ryan going in. Taking on Alex Smith. First year with the Redskins. And... I think Matt Ryan this year, if I think Matt Ryan can make an argument for um, MVP, if Mahomes wasn't straight killing it this year, he's having a really great year. Uh, Fifteen touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, Adrian Peterson for the Redskins, he's doing really well as well. I don't think anyone, you know, we talk about this guy week in and week out, and I don't think anyone expected Adrian Peterson at this age to be. You know, getting 587 yards on the season already, only halfway in. But there he is, doing really well. Um, the Redskins, I think, are having a pretty decent year. Um, I don't really see, you know, with the Eagles addition to Tate, it might come down to Redskins and Eagles. I don't see the Cowboys or Giants coming back. So I think they're in a pretty safe spot. This isn't necessarily a must win for them, where it is a must win for the Falcons. Yeah, um, I I, I kind of think it is a must win though for the Redskins. Um, you know they're sitting at five and two right now, uh, top of the division. Uh, another win this week would be huge for them to pull kind of you know far away from uh, the Eagles and the Cowboys for the end of the year for the division lead and everything. Um, they uh, uh, have sort of a tough schedule. Um, most of their, they only have uh, they only have three more home games after this week. Oh, that's brutal. Uh, so, yep, brutal schedule for them. So it's going to be important to win these games. Um, on the other side of the ball, on the Falcons, this is an absolute must win, uh, especially just because of how competitive that division is right now. Um, the uh, Saints are like six and one, seven and one, or something like that, and the Panthers are five and two. So they're they're both fighting for that division uh, uh, win, you know, and the Falcons need to start winning games to compete. Unless they're, uh, I think they're going to miss the playoffs if they don't win this game. That'd be that'd be crazy not seeing the Falcons in the playoffs too. Um, we got, uh, man. So in terms of that division, the NFC South, you know, the Panthers are playing the Bucks this week, and the Saints are playing the Rams. So those could go either way uh so yeah if the falcons win they're kind of in the in the running again they'd only be two games behind the saints and but you know like they have a they have a pretty tough schedule as well going forward um yeah i don't know who do you got winning um i'm gonna i'm gonna pick the the falcons um and i i only say that they're coming off a bye week um, and I, I think they're desperate. I think they're desperate for a win. Um, the Redskins defense is actually 
really, really good uh, this year. So I think it's going to be a t- close, tough game. Um, but I, I just think Atlanta, this is going to be the, the turning point of the season where they win this game. They they actually will probably start competing um, for the rest of the year. But if they lose this game, I, I just think that they're, they're done. Uh, I, I, three and five, I think, is just too hard of a record to come back from. Um, and even getting a wild card spot, especially just how competitive the NFC is right now. So um, I'm going to pick the Falcons, but if they, if they lose this week, uh, I might not pick them ever again. <laughs> I, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to go with the Redskins this week. Um, I didn't really have a particular reason why I was going with the Redskins. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the Falcons as an organization. Um, I would say they're probably my top three, top four favorite teams in the NFL. But this Redskins team looks pretty good. And, you know, they've had some pretty convincing wins so far this season. Um, you know, they beat the Packers. Not always not always easy to beat the Packers. It was, it was in Washington, so I'm a little different. Uh, they beat the Panthers, who are really good. So, you know, but other teams, you know, they lost. They got blown out by the Saints. So, you know, put a good team in front of them. It might be a little bit different. The Falcons might be a little bit different, like you were saying. And but no, I got the uh, I got the Redskins winning. So that's who I got winning. Yeah. And on to the next one: Lions, Vikings. <sighs> so yeah, I'll start the Lions. Uh, unless you've been living on Iraq, you know the Lions that traded Golden Tate on Tuesday to meet the trade deadline. Um, and it's a huge hit to their receiving core. They got Galladay. They got Marvin Jones Jr. But now they're missing that middle guy, that slant runner. Uh, Riddick, I don't know if is able going to step up in that situation. Carry on Johnson could uh, take a lot of slant routes, a lot of, you know, um, different routes for him. I noticed they started throwing a lot more last week against the Seahawks. But the Vikings are so good. And, you know, they're still suffering a little bit of injuries in the secondary. Quinn's hand is still bothering him, I believe. Uh, T. Tabor is ranked 117th out of 117, you know, safeties in the league. But they got Darius Slay, who's probably going to go one-on-one with um, Diggs. And that's going to leave Quinn with his injured arm on Thalen, who's pretty much tearing it up this year. So, you know... I believe I believe the Vikings get their running back back. Um, uh, Delvin, Delvin Cook is going to be on. Uh, he'll be back, but on limited snaps. They said. Okay, so they'll probably, you know, if if Matt Patricia and this offense, you know, Jim Bob Cooter's offense or defense. I mean, if Matt Patricia and this defense uh, play uh, Damon Harrison when Delvin Cook is in, I think they'll be all right. Um, you know, he's going to be on the team for a full week, unlike against the Seahawks, where he was only on the team for a couple of days. I'm going with the Lions simply because they're my team. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. You can go. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I think, uh, um, you know, moving forward with the, uh, the NFC North, uh, the next next few weeks are going to be um, really brutal for this division. Um, the Packers are the only team that have played every single buddy in the NFC North so far. Um, so I think they have that advantage um, for right now because the next, like, five weeks, uh, everyone's playing each other at least once or twice again. Um, and, you know, this is the first uh, first week the Lions and Vikings play each other, and I think this is going to be a brutal game. Uh um, I, you know, Lions have never lost um, at the uh, the new stadium, the U.S. Bank Stadium. Um, but I think this is the first week they get their their first loss, just because uh, I, I think Colton Tate was a real big part of that offense, um, especially on third down. And it's gonna be tough to find a replacement, for, especially for a guy like that. Um, and I, I think uh, I think the Vikings are gonna be a little pissed off about last week for kind of getting embarrassed by the Saints. Um, they played Drew Brees really well, uh, limited him to only like 100 and something yards. Um, but Kirk Cousins had a big pick six. Um, so this is going to be the week that he needs to prove himself that 
he was worth all the money and start winning some division games too. It was, uh, it was a pretty big loss for them last week. So I'm going to pick the Vikings. Yeah, Um. another thing to add, the Lions are also the first team to give the Vikings the loss in that stadium too. So there's that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not too much different than playing at Ford Field, I don't think. Uh, you know, both, you know, domes, you know, control the atmosphere type thing. Uh, probably the same temperature. I don't know. I don't know what the temperature is. So I don't think it'd be too different from, you know, playing. So, you know, unlike, you know, Soldier Field or Lambeau where you got to play outside in like 10 degree weather in the middle of January or whatever. So. All right. Steelers, you picked the Vikings, right? Is that what yeah, you picked? Yeah. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah. All right. Uh, Steelers, Ravens. That's a pretty interesting game. Um, uh, it's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> you know, both teams have four wins. Steelers have two losses. Ravens have four losses. And Steelers got that tie. Um, I'm not completely convinced, you know, the Steelers team – is a playoff team as much as they're just first in division in a division that's kind of seen some weird games going on. Um, you know, Roethlisberger's having a pretty decent year. You know, every week I talk about, you know, when's he going to digress? When's he di- going to digress? I don't think it's going to be this year anymore. You know, I thought he was getting pretty old, pretty up there. His body's not as agile as it used to be. It never really was in the beginning. Uh, he's taken a lot of hits. You know, he has 10 sacks on the season already. Um, I'm a big fan of Juju Smith. Uh, I think he's doing great things for this team, and I think he's going to be that the future of the organization. Um, Antonio Brown's doing really well, too. They both have 46 receptions on the year. Um, Antonio Brown seems to be their red zone target. Uh, he's getting a lot more touchdowns than Juju Smith. Um, but their run game their run game is kind of suffering. You know, you got James Conner trying to fill the shoes of... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Bell. Yeah. You got James Conner trying to fill the shoes of Bell, and that's obviously going to be kind of a, you know, every single week he probably hears the same thing, like, when are we getting Bell back? When are we getting Bell back? And that can't be good for your ego or your mentality going on that field. Um, he has 599 yards, nine touchdowns. He's doing well. Um, And their second rusher on the team, you know, they're a one-rushing team. Their second-highest rusher, Ben Roethlisberger. So, you know, they're – they're suffering a little bit in that run game. James Conner is doing a really decent job. He's obviously not uh, Bell, but he's doing a good job. Um, it, it helps to keep that team kind of dynamic, keep the defense kind of on their toes. The Ravens on the other side of the ball, Joe Flacco's also having a decent year. Um, he gets hit a lot. Uh, his offensive line seems to struggle a little bit, keeping him you know safe. But, you know, he has a lot of targets. Uh, Michael Crabtree, I think they thought he was going to come into this organization and do great things. He's doing good things. He's not doing great things. Um, John Brown's leading that team. But, you know, I, I, I think the Steelers are going to pull this off. Um, I think the Steelers can pull it off. But I also would not be surprised if the Ravens win. I mean, it's in Baltimore. I don't know what the weather's going to be like there Sunday. I don't think it's going to be too much different than, you know, what Pittsburgh would be. But I'm going to go with the Steelers simply because, you know, every time I've played against the Steelers this year, they've lost. So <sighs> Yeah, I'm going to This will be this will be a close game. Um Ravens have dropped uh two two games, um two previous games and they're uh 500 right now. Um everyone's trying to fight for the division lead. You know, Pittsburgh's currently on top um, of the division and everything. And uh, moving forward, you know, this is also going to be one of those divisions where it's going to really come down to um, some aggressive uh, football, I, I think. So this is like the <laughs> like the toughest division, uh, maybe. Um, I think both North is, both Norths um, in the AFC and NFC are probably the toughest right now. Um, just because everyone has a chance, you know. Um, Cleveland's two five and one, so they're. I don't think they're gonna uh, have a shot really. But you know, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and Baltimore are all right there, um, like one game behind each other or in front of each other. So this is gonna be a very, very important game. 
um, for like division lead. Um, it could be potentially have playoff implications too, just because people are, you know, teams are looking for to get that uh, wild card and everything. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to pick the Ravens. Uh, it's in Baltimore. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think if uh, Pittsburgh can pull it off, they'll, uh, they'll probably have my vote as winning the division though. Interesting. Interesting to say the least. Speaking of AFC North, the Cleveland Browns are taking on the Chiefs in Cleveland this weekend, which is going to be the next game. You can start us off. <clears throat> Go for it, my dude. Yeah, so everyone uh, is kind of talking about uh, Baker Mayfield versus uh, Patrick Mahomes. Um, they had that uh, um, big uh, college game. Uh, college. Yeah, yep. Um uh, it was a, uh, what was it? It was a uh, Texas, Texas Tech and uh, Oklahoma. I think it was. Whatever, it was a big game. Yeah, Oklahoma, uh, Texas Tech, where they it was, sixty six to fifty nine. So these guys kind of know each other, uh, are familiar with each other, but unfortunately they're not facing each other. Um, overall, the Chiefs are just a better team. Uh, the Browns are a mess right now. Fired Hugh Jackson this week. Fired their offensive coordinator. So their defensive coordinator, Greg Williams, is currently their head coach. Um, the organization is kind of a mess. Um, there's a lot of stuff re- being reported, um, just how big of a mess it was with Hugh Jackson there. Um, I think this team moving forward is in a better spot than they've ever been though with uh firing him um i think the future is bright for the browns but the chiefs are just too good they're just too good right now um and even though it's in cleveland it'll probably be a cold game it's just uh, i don't know how you stop the uh the chiefs defense uh chiefs offense uh the browns have a really good defense but i i i think the chiefs just have too many weapons we say it every week but they just do (laughs) seriously you know uh the Browns, I, I've, I've been on the Brown side a lot this year. Uh, this is not going to be one of those times. Um, I think the Browns have what it takes, like you said, moving forward to be in a good spot. Baker Mayfield's proving he can do all right. He's eight touchdowns, six interceptions. That's rookie numbers. You know, he's a rookie. Um, he doesn't necessarily have the offensive weapons that, you know, uh, Mahomes has, obviously. But he's making, you know, he's making a mountain out of a molehill in this team. Uh, I don't think anyone expected them to have two wins this early in the season and one tie. Uh, you know, coming off an 0 and 16 season, it's not easy to turn the team around. But I think they're doing a pretty decent job. But like you said, you know, it'd be a little bit different story. I probably would still pick the Chiefs had they not completely fired a lot of their, you know, office, a lot of their front office up there. You know, their like you said, their head coach is gone. Everything is just crazy over there. So they're not going to have, like, I don't know. Maybe they are happy, like, ding dong, the witch is dead, like, and they're going to be, like, all pumped up. But I don't think it's going to be like that, you know, after the first quarter. I think they're going to go down pretty quick. You know, Tyreek Hill is absolutely tearing it up. Travis Kelsey, absolutely tearing it up. You know, you can just go through their entire offense and be like, yeah, that guy's good. You know, like, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Sammy Watkins, Kareem Hunt. You know, even Chris Conley is putting up decent numbers. You know, uh, Kareem Hunt rushing. Patrick Mahomes has 119 rushing yards. Like, this team is absolutely insane. Um, You know, they lost to uh, the Pats a couple weeks ago. But, like, I don't see them losing another game until they play the Rams. So, you know, that's two weeks. But then after that, the probably be pretty set because their schedule's easier than a lot of people i think um so yeah i'm gonna go with the chiefs as well you know this team this offense is something special um i think they have the best offense in the nfl right now i don't think they have the best team in the nfl but they i think they have the best offense in the nfl so you know going against you know a team with a good defense and a good offense like the Rams is gonna be tough but you know the Browns are not one of those teams so Jets Dolphins Jets versus 
the Dolphins. And this game is going to be down there in Miami. It's going to be probably pretty hot again this week. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to start off saying I'm going to go with the Dolphins. Uh, I don't think the Jets are a good team this year. I think they had a couple fluke games where they won. You know, there's been a couple of games where they've looked decent. They stomped on the Detroit Lions, you know, week one. Talk about that pretty much every I, I week. Think, uh, yeah, moving forward, though, um, Brock Osweiler is the answer for this team. Um, they ran the ball really efficiently last week against the Texans. Uh, and it seems like the uh, the defense just kind of gave up. Um uh, I, I think uh, if they can run the ball um, efficiently again and then take some pressure off of Osweiler, it'll help him out because last week it was kind of like, all right, well, we'll run the ball pretty well here and then we'll have we'll just force him to throw it to make plays. And it's not really how Osweiler plays. Um, and then all of a sudden the Texans started scoring and you just can't have a shootout with Brock Osweiler because that's not the quarterback he is. Um, he, he needs to be a game manager. And I think if they could just, you know, get get four or five yards on each run, it'll really um, increase his chances of playing well. I, I'm i just going to take the Dolphins. I think um, the Jets, you know, they're, I don't think they're a bad team. Um, Sam Darnold is obviously a rookie, but he's playing okay. He's not playing bad. Uh Obviously making some rookie mistakes. He's got 10 interceptions, but um, I don't know. Division game. I, I, I don't really see either of these teams making a uh, playoff push. The Dolphins win. They'll be at 5-4. and four. Um, But I, I think there's just a few other teams that are going to make a playoff push, and the Dolphins will kind of regress for, for the rest of the season. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you said Brock Osweiler isn't really the future quarterback of this organization, but I also don't think Tannehill is really a good option for them either. I would not be surprised if they start looking into quarterbacks um, to replace these guys um, in the upcoming class. Simply because, you know, I don't know how the Dolphins feel about Tannehill down there in Miami, but, you know, he's he seems like he's always injured. He doesn't play a lot. Um, I forgot what they were saying last week when we were playing them, when the Lions were playing them. But they were basically saying that Tannehill is, like, always injured. And I don't know how realistic that is. I can click on his stats real quick and find out. But He missed all of last year um, in a torn ACL. And then this year, um, whatever, they just were um, what his uh, injury was. It was like a shoulder injury that they kind of been hush-hush about, but... You know, this the, every year it's kind of like a, a meme with uh, Ryan Tannehill where it's like, okay, this is the year. This is the year he'll break out and prove everyone wrong that he is the quarterback for this team. And he just, he's just not. He's not the guy. How long can and, you be doing that meme, though? Like, when do you guys stop and just say maybe he's not the guy, like what you were saying? Yeah, right. And, you know, it's been – I think he's been in the league for like five years now. Um, and if that surprises you, then – <laughs> like to know that he's been in the league for five years, then yeah, I think it's time to move on because you, you know, you also have guys like um, Jameis Winston who or uh, Marcus Mariota, though, you know, those two guys were one and two um, like three or four years ago in the draft. And everyone's like, Oh yeah, they'll develop to somebody that they'll develop into a good quarterback. It'll just take time. They are what they are. That is who they are. They are not going to get any better. Um, than what they are right now. Uh, Jameis Winston is also uh, just, uh, I, I don't like the guy at all personally uh, for his um, off field issues, but also just, he's not a good quarterback. He just takes, just, just tries to force plays and he makes too many dumb decisions. Um, he got replaced last week with uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. So when you got a guy like Tannehill and it's every year, well, get, this is the year, this is the year he'll break out. It's time to move on. I think. I agree. You know, um, positive things for the Dolphins. Frank Gore, uh, 35 years old, having a pretty decent season. Uh, you know, 385 yards. I don't think anyone expected Frank Gore to be putting up those numbers this year. I certainly didn't. Uh, so, yeah, he's doing really well, I think. Uh, just wanted to say that real quick before we move on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think the Jets really have what it takes um bears bills 
All right. Is that so? Oh man, the Bills are a mess. <laughs> um, I, you know, they brought in another quarterback this week because um, uh, Derek Anderson, the guy they signed two weeks ago, <laughs> but, um, got a concussion, so he's probably not playing. I and I honestly think they're going to start Nathan Peterman this week. Oh Jesus! Um, and he's you know he said he's ready for a win, but against the Bears I though. I just uh, this guy's one of the worst football players I've ever watched. Um, if he starts this game, he might he may get murdered by the Bears. Um, <laughs> uh, their defense is just going to come after this guy. He's going to make bad decisions. It's going to be it's going to be a brutal game for the Bills. Um, Bears are playing really well. Um, the offense is starting to click. It's you know Trubisky is making plays on his feet. Uh, he might not get in like. You know all these passing yards and everything, or all these deep throws, but teams are um, really just respecting his receivers, and it's opening up um, the field for him to run because these guys are uh, going towards the receivers, or they're going toward uh, Terry Cohen in the backfield. You know they're they're looking at this team, and they're the offense is starting to click. I, I think they're um, a lot better than I would have guessed this year, uh, especially with Kyle Mack and everything, getting the signing, blah blah blah. I don't know if he's playing this week. I think this would be a good week for him to sit out again if he's injured, um, because I, I don't think the Bills, uh, the Bills will score maybe three points. That's it. I say start him this week. I say start him. Why not? Hopefully, he gets injured a little bit more. That was kind of fucked yeah, up. Sir. <laughs> but like you know, Khalil Mack. A lot of people talk about Khalil Mack on this Bears team. You know, obviously for good reasons. But looking at his stats, he's kind of digressed a lot. You know, and. We can easily blame that on his ankle, which, you know, is obviously the reason he's injured. You know, his ankle is kind of pushing him back. You know, you got to take off a little bit of weight from, you know, his legs. It's kind of hard to push offensive linemen. But even even with Khalil Mack injured and, you know, not performing as well he was he was in the first quarter, you know, you still got, like, other guys on this team who were really good, you know, uh, Akeem Hicks is up there is one of them. He has three forced fumbles on the season. This this defense is doing work, and it's allowing this offense to do work. I don't know. They just have, like, I think the morale on this team is at an all-time high. Um, you know, Trubisky, everyone kind of joked about him last year. Everyone kind of joked about him at the beginning of the season. But he's has 15 touchdowns, you know, on the season. I've been starting him in fantasy football every other week. Um, he only has six interceptions, and I think two of those came from the same game. Uh, two or three, and he has two hundred and ninety-six rushing yards. Um, I was saying this last year in a lot of forums, specifically on Reddit, that you know he is a good scrambler. He knows how to run the ball. He knows how to like avoid tackles. Um, he does have sixteen sacks because their offensive line kind of struggles a little bit. Um, but when their offensive line holds well, this team is really good. And I hate saying that about the Bears. Um, you know, obviously you do too since you're another NFC North team. But, you know, I think I think they're, they have what it takes to make the playoffs. Um, I think Trubisky is pushing himself into, you know, the top 20 quarterbacks right now, top 15 almost. Uh, do I think he's going to make top 10? No. Do I think he's going to make top 10 in his career? No. I don't think uh, we'll see a season where Trubisky is being a top 10 quarterback. But he doesn't have to with this team. Um, their defense is doing really well. You know, their offense is doing good enough. And that's that's all it really takes. You know, the Seahawks pretty much won the Super Bowl because of that. So, um, so yeah, I also got the Bears winning that game. I'm assuming you said Bears might have yeah. missed. Yeah. Uh, Buccaneers, Panthers. So you can go on a little bit of a rant against Winston again if you want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he will be playing this week. I think uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be starting, um, which he should. Uh, I, I think he's just a better quarterback right now than um, Jameis Winston. Um, uh, uh, the thing about this game, though, is not a lot of – People realize that the 
Um, the Buccaneers are first in yards per game and they're first in pass yards per game. Um, that was actually surprising me. I looked it up this week. Um, we're getting big, big numbers this year in the passing game. Um, obviously, with Mike Evans and Sean Jackson, uh, some deep threats, you know. Um, and another surprising thing about the Buccaneers is that Jason Pierre-Paul has eight sacks. Um, so uh, I think you know, the defense has been the weak point for this team. They're 32nd in interceptions. Um, so I I only get bodes well, though, for when you play the Panthers, especially in Carolina. Um Carolina's been pretty good this year. I, I have them actually getting one of the wild card spots this year. Uh, I think they're good enough to get in the playoffs. Um, Cam Newton's playing really well this year. He's uh, I don't know. He's running, passing, and everything. And I don't know. I like I like the Panthers right now. I think they're looking pretty good every week. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take the Panthers. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, before I, on this on 32 and goal, I've talked about Cam Newton and how this. This offense is pretty much a Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey offense. But Devin Funches and uh, DJ Moore have been stepping up as well. Um, you know, obviously the majority of the yards are from Cam Newton and Christian McCaffrey. But, you know, this team is starting to be a little bit more versatile than just running the ball all the time. You know, uh, before Cam Newton would make a couple of throws, um, you know, he has 238 completion or 158 completions. 13 touchdowns, four interceptions. But I think I think Cam Newton's real advantage is his ability to run. And, you know, he's a, he's a stockier quarterback compared to a lot of quarterbacks, so he can take a hit a little bit better. So I think he takes more risks going in. Um, you know, Fitzpatrick, like you were saying, he's, he's on fire. You know, Jam- Jameis Winston has 1,100-something 1, yards, and Fitzpatrick has a little bit more than that. Um, both of them have similar play styles. Um, I think they get a little bit too cocky and just throw the ball. And, you know, as a quarterback, you know, you're supposed to throw the ball. But I think sometimes they just get a little too cocky and just throw it. And, you know, it's not always a good option. You know, Fitzpatrick has five interceptions. Winston has ten interceptions. Winston has more interceptions and touchdowns this late in the game you know this late in the season and it's that's like uh maybe maybe you should stop eating w's and start working on your passing man so i don't know uh i i also have the panthers um i'm not sure if they'll make the wild card like you said um but they could they could they could win the division easily uh going forward who are they playing going forward um you know the Browns, the Saints, so. the Saints again, twice. Okay, so they got the Bucks twice, the Steelers, the Lions. They're probably gonna lose that game. The Seahawks, the Bucks, the Browns, the Saints twice, and the Falcons. So you know, the NFC South is another one of those divisions where almost every year it could be the Saints, the Panthers, or the Falcons. Um, earlier in the year, I thought, I think a lot of us thought that the Buccaneers were gonna make a push the way uh, Fitzpatrick was putting on his Fitz magic. And, you know, even he said he was like, I'm going to either be MVP or get benched, you know. Uh, that's just the way he plays. But I got the Panthers winning as well. So it should be it should be an interesting game. I think a lot of these games this week are pretty interesting. I think this is probably going to be one of the better weeks in football we've had this season. You know, last week was pretty good too. But I think this one, you know, a lot of these games are we're getting to that point of the season where a lot of these games matter. Like almost every single game matters now. Um, Chargers, Seahawks. So Seahawks are coming off a win in Detroit, four and three. The Chargers are doing work though. The Chargers have. They're like the problem with the Chargers is you know they're in this division with the Chiefs. And so they're kind of like overshadowed by how well, you know, Mahomes and the rest of the Chiefs are doing that they don't necessarily like get the recognition they have. You know, Philip Rivers is having a really good year. Um, you know, he's sitting at 17 touchdowns and only three interceptions. Um, he has 2,008 yards already. So he, this team 
who has like everything going against them as far as like where they're located, their fan base, everything is, and they're still doing really well. Um, who do I think is going to win this game? I think, I think it's going to be the Chargers. I think the Chargers is going to win this game. So make sure I write that down. I, um, I, I actually have, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take Seattle. Um, I think Seattle's starting to click and, um, I, you know, if, uh, the Chargers are coming off a bye week. Uh, Philip Rivers playing great. Melvin Gordon's probably one, probably the second best running back in the league right now. Um, right behind Todd Gurley. Keenan Allen is having a hell of a year as well. Um, the defense is okay. They're not going to have Nick Bosa back yet, but I think once they get him back, that's going to really change this team. Um, I just think that Seattle is a tough place to play. You know, Seahawks um, uh, played the Rams really tough in Seattle. Still lost the game by two points and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think the Chargers are on the same caliber as the Rams. Uh, I think they're close. But I, I, I got the Seahawks winning this one. Um, I think that Russell Wilson is just playing really well. He's you know he's game managing this whole offense. Um, Doug Baldwin is starting to have uh, starting to kick it in gear as well. Um, last week um, they played really well against Detroit. That was a tough game uh, going into Detroit to play and everything. And they they I don't know they, they proved me wrong for my pick. I picked the Lions last week, but I, I don't know, man. Seattle Seattle's playing pretty well. They could make a playoff push as too for that wild card spot. Yeah, I agree. Um, but you know I don't know. You know. The, a lot of these games, you know, typically this far into our show, we're pretty much dead even as far as, like, games go. And, like, this week is just almost every other game. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to pick this guy. And you're like, oh, I'm going to pick that guy. So, like, that just shows how, like, I don't know. I don't know if, like, both teams can win. It's in Seattle, and it's probably arguably one of the hardest places to play at. You know, Chargers – coming from Los Angeles, not that far of a journey. That's still going to be in the same time zone, which is kind of to their benefit. But I don't know, man. Like, you look at this Seattle team, and you see Russell Wilson, and he's having a pretty good year, too. And, like, I thought they were going to digress a little bit when they lost the Legion of the Boom. They lost Jimmy Graham. And they're still doing okay. I think they're clicking a little bit better, like you said, um, you know, going into the season, when we first started doing the show, we were kind of talking about the Seattle team and how they were kind of a shit show. Uh, but, you know, they've gone since then, you know, they've won. You know, they lost to the Rams, which was expected, and the Bears. So they've only really lost to teams that are, like, decent, um, except for the Broncos. But... You know, even the Broncos are a pr pretty okay team. Yeah, that's a tough place to play. Yeah. In Denver. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, either either one of these teams could win. Uh, I'm just going to go with the Chargers, though. Um, Texas Bron or Texans Broncos. This is going to be an interesting game. Um, yeah, this is going to be uh, this is going to be a defensive game. I, I really think. Um, I, I think uh, starting anyone in fantasy this week from this game would be kind of a foolish move um, just because both these defenses are incredible. Um, Von Miller and J.J. Watt both have eight sacks on the year. Um, and but I don't know. You know, the Broncos just tr traded away Demarius Thomas to the Texans. Uh, he'll probably be on limited snaps this week. I don't expect him to play that much. Um, but like I said, man, Denver, Denver is a super hard place to play. Um, I also, there, you know, I haven't really seen anything uh, mentioned about it and how um, Deshaun Watson is, but he's got a bruised lung. Yeah, um, no, yeah, he does. I don't know. Yeah. And you know what, what the, you know, especially the weather or the altitude in Denver, that's gotta play, have an effect somehow with him. Right. Uh, I know he's a lot better than he was like two or three weeks ago. But that's got to have some effect to him. I, I think, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I just remember, like, guys being not able to play in Denver um, just because uh, of the, the high altitude and everything. Um, I, I've been kind of, like, going back and forth um, on this game, looking at it, because I, I think this is a game that the Texans need to win. Um, they're, 
you know, they're pretty pretty close. Uh, I think they're in the they're yeah they're leading their division right now. Um, they're five and three. They're two games above um, the next team. So if they win this game, man, they can really start to pull away in that division because I don't think that division is going to be really really competitive. Um, at all, and then Bron- Denver, you know, they're third place right now in that division. I, I don't see them competing too much this year. I think the their offense is kind of flat and not really um, clicking at all, especially with Case Keenum as their quarterback. Um, tough man. This this is a tough call. I, I think this is one of the tougher games to pick this week. Um, but I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Denver. Uh, just because it's in Denver, and I think uh, our place to play, and I think this is, is important to have home field advantage for this game. Yeah, so um, you mentioned already that Damaris Thomas got traded to the Texans, and obviously there wasn't much they could do about that in terms of deadline, um, but that's got to be terrible. You know, he can just go in and be like, yeah, these are the plays. Like, these are the plays we run. And that gives the Texans a huge advantage. Um, you know, Texans are 5-3 and three right now. And all five of those games were the last five games they've played. They're 5-0 and oh, they're in terms of, like, the last five games. Um, you know, DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins, is, we're looking at probably one of the best receivers in the game right now on this team. Um, you know, we... I remember we had a conversation where we were talking about like the top three and you know, Tyler was like, this is the top three. And I was like, ah, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, who else could be up there? And I mentioned Deandre Hopkins as, you know, p- potentially one of the top three. But I think at this point, I don't think he's top three, but I, st- I think he's on the edge of being a top three. Um, you know, a healthy Deshaun Watson could put Hopkins in the top three. You know, he has six touchdowns, 789 yards. He had one of the most insane catches I've ever seen, like, two weeks ago. Um, they called it back, but, you know, it was absolutely crazy. He grabs it one hand, catches it with his nutsack, and, you know, it gets called back. But, like, the pure amount of athleticism in this guy is insane. Um, then you got Fuller, you know, Cutie as well. Um but the Broncos, I really, really like on this team Philip Lindsay. Uh, I think he's a fan favorite down there. I think he's from Denver. I may be wrong there, but I think he's from Denver. So I think he, yeah. like every time he's on the field, he gets like that extra bit of motivation that he's like playing for the team he grew up watching. Um, I don't think anyone expected him to have 531 yards uh, as an undrafted free agent that was picked up. And he has three touchdowns. He's their leading running back over Royce. Uh, yeah. Phil Lindsay is their number one running back. And, you know, 93 attempts, 53 yards. And, you know, with his size, he's shorter than I am, plowing through like 200, 300 guys in the red zone to get touchdowns. I think he has a lot of heart. I'm a big fan of him. Um, but I'm going to go with the Texans on this one. I'm going to disagree with you one more time. Um, I think the Texans are clicking really well. I think Watson, although he's playing injured, is playing smart. Um, I would every time, you know, he's one of those guys like Rogers, like every time he runs the ball, you're like, holy crap, he might die in this run. Um, and so I think a lot of fans are upset that he's just trying to take like huge hits close to the goal and. Uh, he's getting hit pretty hard. Like you said, he has bruised lungs. And Mile High Stadium is going to make an impact. I don't know. Um, I got the Texans winning, though. I think it's going to be a good game, man. Again, that's another good game. The next two we're talking about are also really good games. Uh, the only one that's not really going to be a good game, I think, is Monday Night Football. But, um, I mean, they're both close in terms of whatever. Ram- Rams Saints in New Orleans. Yeah, um, so I think the big topic this week 
is uh, Packers versus Patriots just because it's Rodgers versus Brady. But man, I, it almost seems like the narrative should be really Rams versus Saints because this is – this is like huge for um, playoff implications. This, you know, this is probably the the number one and number two seed in the NFC fighting for home field advantage out playoffs. Um, um, the the Rams are third in points per game. Saints are second in points per game. Um, I man, you know, this is this is a, a tough game to pick as well because both these teams are great and. Last week, um, the uh, Packers showed that the Rams can be beat. Um, that game was pretty close. Um, <laughs> I think the Packers could have won it there at the end if someone didn't take it out of the end zone, but whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but I just I, I'm gonna I I like the Rams at this one. Um, I I think this team they just got better uh, by signing Dante Fowler too because pass rush was kind of their their big issue, especially in the outside. Uh, on the inside, they're not having any issues at all with Aaron Donald and uh, Nadama Kansu. Um, Donald's got 10 sacks, and he, he's just playing incredible this year. He is a force to be reckoned reckon with. And I just, I just, you know, both these teams have um, high powered offenses and everything, man. I just, I just don't see the Rams losing for a while maybe and you know maybe, maybe this is the game they lose fine for you know finally um but i don't know it's gonna be hard to stop both these offenses but i'm gonna, I'm gonna take the rams just because i think they have a better defense than the saints you know you mentioned nadama can sue you mentioned aaron darnold or aaron donald but you know last week the rams also picked up dante flower or dante fowler um who's a very explosive defensive end from the Jaguars, you know? And, you know, that's going to probably be the best defensive line in football. Like, who? I don't know who else is better than that. Like, those guys are all guys who could potentially be Hall of Famers. And they're all playing on the same team, on this team that's so – like, I don't see the Rams losing a game – in regular season, um, you know, they have a tough schedule. You know, any other year, this Rams schedule would be a shit show for the Rams. Uh, you know, the Saints, uh, Seahawks, Chiefs, Lions, Bears, Eagles, Cardinals, 49ers. You know, any other year, you'd be like, ah, I don't know if the Rams can beat those guys. But this year, you're like, uh, Drew Brees might die. Uh, then they're going to go kill, you know, Mahomes, Matthew Stafford's in trouble, and you're like, what is going on with this Los Angeles? Um, offensively, you know, Todd Gurley, this point of the season has strong, you know, a strong debate for him being the offensive player of the year. Um, his 800 yards, um, 11 touchdowns. He's the lead running back on the best team in the NFL right now. Um, on the other side of the ball, like you, like you always say, Drew Brees. Really good. Uh, broke the all-time, you know, receiving yards or passing yards this year. Hit 500 touchdowns this year. Probably a couple games away from breaking some other record I don't know about yet until ESPN tells me about it. And, you know, Alvin Kamara is doing really well. Uh, so, I don't know. Drew Brees is another quarterback who, for some reason, isn't, like as popular as Rodgers and Brady, but he always puts up really big numbers. You know, he has 77.4 percentage this year. He's doing well. 14 touchdowns, only one interception. And I think that was last game, but I'm not sure. Um and so I'm going to go with the Rams as well. Um but I think this is going to be a really good game. I think uh I'm excited that it's not during the Lions game. And, you know, I wouldn't be I wish they could flex it out to make it Monday night football because I think it's going to be that good of a game. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think they can do that because uh, contracts and things and stuff. But so going forward, you got the Green Bay Packers going to Boston to take on the Patriots Gillette Stadium. 
Interesting. Interesting to say the least. Yep. So obviously the big narrative is Rodgers versus Brady. Um, but the two don't won't face each other because they both play offense. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the Green Bay Packers offense first. Um, last week they kind of struggled against the Rams. There's a lot of opportunities for them to pull away in that game that they didn't. Um, the offense is still trying to get it together. Um, we're at week nine now, and it's kind of you know tough to tough to see that this Packer team is struggling to get anything really going on offense at times. Right. Um, Rogers only has 13 touchdowns on the year and one interception. Um, that's that's low. That's that's low numbers for Aaron Rodgers, especially at this point of the year. Um, kind of disappointing to see that. Um, and you know the Patriots defense uh, hasn't been stellar. Um, but they do their job. They get all these things right. Um, they do enough. And it'll be interesting to see, like, Devontae Adams go up against uh, Stephen Gilmore. Um, I think he's one of the better corners in the NFL right now. And uh, on the other side of the ball for the Packers defense, they did a really good job um, last week against the Rams. And that's, you know, no easy task. I, I knew the Rams were going to score points. Um, but they held them to four three and outs to start the game. Um, that's, that's incredible. I, I would say, I think that was m- more impressive to me than anything last week. Um, I, you know, I think our defensive coordinator is making really good ju- adjustments. Um, I really like what I see from him. Um, this team is a lot better defensively than they have been in the past. Um, they're still giving up a lot of points. Um, but it's kind of expected with the offenses we're facing, um, and the, the schedule we have. And uh, I'm really excited to see more of uh, Jair Alexander, uh, our first-round draft pick. The dude was all over the field last week. Um, I, I was just really, really impressed by him, and I really am excited to see what he does in the future. Um, uh, not to be a homer in, on this pick, but I, I'm going to take Green Bay. Um, I think this uh, this is going to be a really tough game. Obviously, I you know I talked about last week how. Packers have a brutal five game stretch here and we got to win these games. If we want to compete, right. We got to win tough games. Um, last week was winnable. We could have won. Um, uh, if we got the ball at the end there and I think this will be a close game again. Um, but I, I, I think the Packers win this one and, uh, yeah, I'm excited for the game. Yeah. So this is, this is awkward, um, for the Packers because, you know, again, with that trade deadline thing where you're forced to do something probably a week before a game that it's critical that you didn't do that thing. And the thing I'm talking about is getting rid of Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Um, you know, Tom Brady and this offense, we're looking at, you know, Gronkowski, uh, Gordon, you know, Edelman, Hogan, White, all these guys are doing really well offensively, you know, in the passing game. And the Packers just got rid of, you know, potentially po- pro bowler, uh, you know, safety. And, you know, on the season, he has three pass deflected, three interceptions, you know, um, one forced fumble. Like, ha, Clinton Dix is not a joke. And it's it's going to hurt the Packers going against a passing heavy team. Uh, but, you know. Good news is your defensive line did really well last week against, you know, a really good offensive line and, you know, the Rams. So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Uh, Another thing that you guys did, you know, Ty Montgomery, um, which is interesting because, you know, McCarthy has always been a running by commission type coach. And getting rid of Ty Montgomery, who had 26 attempts on the season, is going to force Aaron Jones to get a little bit more carries. And I think that's a thing a lot of Packers fans are going to be looking forward to is Aaron Jones running the ball a lot more. Um, he, he's a very explosive player. Uh, they would have beat the Detroit Lions had they actually used him a little bit more. Uh, but for some reason, you guys didn't. I don't know why. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, you said he only has 13 touchdowns, but he only has one interception. And that's not bad considering, you know, every other week it seems like one of your offensive weapons is injured. Um Jimmy Graham, I think, is going to be the crucial 
key to winning this game. I'm also picking the Packers to win this game. I thought it was going to be a little bit different. I tried calling Tyler out for it to hopefully sway your vote. Uh, that didn't obviously work. But, you know, I think the Packers have decent weapons. But, man, this this Patriots offense, their defense is okay. But their offense, man, is is something you would, like, have a Pro Bowl Madden. Like, you know, obviously the Chiefs offense are a lot better. But, you know, Gronkowski, good. Always injured, but good. Uh Edelman, great. Hoke, or Gordon, great. White, I don't think a lot of people even think about uh, James White when they talk about the Patriots. But he has 459 yards and six touchdowns. Uh, you know, and losing Clinton Dix is is going to be hard, but, you know, it's going to be a shootout between Rodgers and Brady who can go toe-to-toe. Uh, it could potentially be the last time we see these two quarterbacks play each other. Uh, I don't know. You know how that's going to go the rest of the season, and you guys probably won't play for another four or five years. Uh, so interesting. I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, I'm glad it's Sunday night. Uh, wish the Rams Saints game was another primetime game, but you know, if not, at least we'll get to see this one. So I also got the Packers winning this game. Uh, I hope they lose, but whatever. So put us both down for the Packers there. Did we both say the Rams, by the way? You said the Rams, right? Yeah, I said the Rams. Okay, and then who did you say for the Jets Dolphins? Uh, Dolphins. Okay, so did I. All right, so the last game, Monday Night Football between the Titans and the Cowboys in Arlington, I think is where they play. And... You know, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a close game, <laughs> I think. I don't think it's going to be necessarily a good game, but it's going to be a close game. Uh, let's see. The Cowboys are currently sitting at 3-4, and four, and the Titans are sitting at 3-4 and four as well. So they're both at .429 on the season. Uh, Dak Prescott, eight touchdowns, four interceptions. He's not doing a lot with this offense. I think, I think... This team heavily relies on Ezekiel Elliott. I think this team heavily relies on Ezekiel Elliott. Um, so if the Titans, who have a who have a pretty good rushing defense, uh, can stop them, what are you doing? Can you send me stuff. Oh. So uh, the Tennessee Titans have a pretty decent uh, rush defense. So, if they can stop Ezekiel Elliott, which I don't think they'll be able to stop, but they can limit him, I think they'll do okay. I'm going to go with the Cowboys on this one. <sighs> Simply because it's in Dallas. Um, I don't really have a favorite to win this. And I you know, hope the Cowboys lose because that's always hilarious every time. But, you know, I don't think this Tennessee Titans team... Marcus Mariota, I know you're not a big fan of him. I think we're about to hear you talk about that, but I, yeah, they don't really I'm have not. any weapons. I'm not a big, I'm not a big Marcus Mariota fan. Um, the the guy is what, what he is. Uh, I you know I when he first joined the league, I was kind of excited about him. I thought he was a good prospect, um, but he, I don't know, he's just an average guy, an average player, and he, you know he's only got three touchdowns and five interceptions on the year. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's just bad. I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of Dak Prescott either, um, but he's got eight touchdowns at least, right? I mean, um, I don't know. I don't think this team, the Titans, have a lot of weapons. Um, I mean, Corey Davis is okay. Um, but besides that, man, I just, I don't know. This team's kind of a mess. I, I kind of thought in the beginning of the year that they might win the division. Um, you know they they won it. Uh, they won it last year, or uh, they didn't win last year, but they made the playoffs. They went to the divisional round last year and everything. And I thought they would kind of take that next step, especially with signing like Deion Lewis mm -hmm. and um, uh, who's their uh, defensive guy they signed from the Patriots last year. Um, I can't remember his name, but. 
Um, I, I, yeah, I just, uh, I don't see the Titans making a push, man. I think this is definitely a season to kind of rebuild or at least next year to rebuild. Um, I don't know. I, I got the Cowboys winning. Um, it's in Dallas, so I'll take the Cowboys. Yeah, so I agree. You know, speaking of like what you were saying that we thought they were going to win the division, uh, Texans are slowly pulling away in the AFC South. Like you said, if they win tomorrow, Titans lose tomorrow, I think both Jags and Colts are on a bye week. Um, you know, they're going to be three games ahead. Andrew Luck is having a really good year. He could potentially be the comeback player of the year. Uh, and they could potentially sneak up and maybe get a wild card, the Colts. But I don't I don't see the Titans doing much more this year. So, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting week. I'm, I'm excited. What's, uh, besides the Packers, Patriots, what game are you looking forward to? Rams, Saints? Yeah, I, I think that's the the big game of the week. To be honest, yeah. um, it could be a shootout. I really think, um, you know, we're kind of seeing potentially uh, like an NFC Championship game. I think um, Rams Saints will be good. Um, Seahawks Chargers will be good. Ravens Steelers is always good. Always good. You know, Vikings Lions is a big game. It's a big week, man. Of football, it's a big week. Yeah. Honestly, excited. honestly, the only two games that are not really anything I care about this week are, you know, two of the primetime games, Raiders 49ers and then the Titans Cowboys. Um, every other game, it's like, yeah, I would watch that if, you know, they weren't playing at the same time as my team. Uh, you know, Chargers Seahawks, they don't, they play at four. Texans Broncos, they play at four. Rams Saints, they play at four. All three of those games are really good. They're going to be really good. You know, Packers 820, they got that Sunday night. Um, one o'clock, but like, or uh, one o'clock games: Lions, Vikings, Falcons, Redskins. I'd watch that. Steelers, Ravens. I'd watch that. Chiefs, Browns. Maybe I might watch that. Um, probably not. If it's probably like my least excited game, just because I feel like that's the biggest difference between two teams. So I don't know, man. And the Browns have been so exciting to watch though this year. <laughs> like every year, it's just like, are they going to overtime this week? How, how are they going to screw this up? Who's going to miss a field goal this week? They're, they're exciting, man. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You're right. Um, they always, they play to the other team's level too much, I think. And it, it kind of screws them over. You know, they only win by a couple points. They only lose by a couple points. And like, it's got to be frustrating to be a Browns fan, man. So. Yeah. But anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight. If you're following on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe. If you follow us on Twitch, make sure you hit that subscribe. Hit that Twitter, 32 and goal. Uh, we're working on actually making that stuff worth following. Uh, I haven't really put too much time into any of those th things yet. So uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We got a little bit of extra stuff on my plate right now, but we're still going to be doing these weekly episodes. And we should be back Monday morning to talk about the Sunday games. I think it's going to be me and Ryan. Um, and we could possibly do Tuesday if Robbie's up for it, but I don't know. We will see when it happens. If not, make sure you guys hit that follow button on Twitter so you guys know when we are live. And you got any last things you want to say? Pack go. <laughs> All, right. All right. He said, go, Pack, go. I'm going to say, go, Lions, go. Roar. We don't have a thing. Also, I'm going to go uh, kill some people in Valentine now. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's... uh. We've been super into Red Dead Redemption, so if you're into Red Dead Redemption and multiplayer comes out, make sure you guys add us on Xbox, and you can be in our gang. We don't have a gang yet, but we're hoping there's going to be gangs, so don't actually do that. Probably won't add you, but make sure you guys hit that follow button. Peace out.